Hi everyone, my name is Isabella Sislawati. I'm an excellent phobia enthusiast with decades of business experience. I recently came across someone performing data reconciliation in a slow and painful way. This person was comparing two sets of data, one from the general ledger cash account and another from the bank statement. What he was trying to do was to ensure that the cash balance reported in the general ledger is aligned with the information in our bank statement. Any differences must be identified and explained to make sure that everything is under control. Now, the slow way of doing data reconciliation, which I had the privilege of witnessing recently, was something like this. So this is the slow way. In the GL, we have invoice amount associated with invoice number one presented in OneDroid. We do copy, control C, and then paste that in here. And then after that, going into the bank statement and looking for invoice number one to see if the payment has hit our bank statement. And in this instance, it has. There are two rows in here because the payment occurred twice. And then we do Control C and Control B in here. So that's in our GL, General Ledger, and then that's from the bank statement. And then after that, we compare the difference like that. So this is the slow and tedious way to identify that this transaction is now fully reconciled. So the person then type match in there and this is good. And then he would then continue to the next item, which is invoice number two, and then pasting it in here. And then after that, go into the bank statement and then find invoice number two. And again, there are two rows and then control C and then put it in here, and then do the difference. But in this instance, it is now different. We have $200 invoices, but then what's being paid in the bank statement is only 150. So therefore, this ROI for this transaction is not yet matched. So that becomes something that they need to investigate. As you can see, this is the slow way of reconciliation. And this person had to repeat the process all over again and again and again. If you ever have to perform data reconciliation or if you were currently doing it the slow and painful way, please do know that there is an easier and faster way of doing things thanks to the new Excel feature called Copilot for Finance. This feature will enable data reconciliation to be completed in seconds. In this video, I want to show you how to set up your Excel file so that we can perform data reconciliation with ease in your day-to-day -day life. There are five steps required. Step one, set up the two data sets in table format. Step two, check if you have installed Copilot for Finance. And step three, click to run the Copilot for Finance. Step four, review the output. Step five, refresh and troubleshoot. Let me walk you through each step one by one. Step one is to convert the two tables that we want to reconcile into table format. These are the two tables, cash GL and bank statement. And to convert that into table format, simply press Ctrl T and then hit OK. And then table design ribbon will pop up. Just rename the table name. I'm going to call it cash underscore GL for the first table. And then for the second table, the bank statement, Ctrl T, hit OK. And then same thing, rename that as bank statement. Done. Next step is to check that we have Copilot for Finance installed. If not yet, then click Add In. And then after that, click More Add In. And then just type in Copilot for Finance. And then click Add. Okay, the next step is to click Copilot for Finance. And then this pane show up, it says, Hi Isabella, ready to explore? Yes, let's click Reconcile Data. And then it will prompt the two worksheets, Cash GL and Bank Statement. That's the worksheet name. And then this is the table name already preset up. If you're doing this for the very first time and it hasn't, just make sure you pick the correct worksheet name and table name. And then hit Next. And then 
it will recommend the columns that is to be reconciled. At the moment, the recommendation is invoice date, invoice number, and invoice amount, as well as payment date, invoice number, and payment amount from the bank statement. Now, for my purpose, I don't care about the date. It's okay for the cash to arrive late in my bank statement as long as the full amount match by invoice number. So I'm going to make adjustment. I'm going to say I don't care about the date for this reconciliation. Therefore, let's just match the invoice number in the general ledger as well as the amount by invoice number in the bank statement. And then hit next and voila, the output is now done. Now, let's review the output together. On the left, we have reconciliation report. It is reconciling two tables, the cash GL and the bank statement. And then there is a summary that you can collapse or expand. Let's collapse that first. It says there is unmatched transactions. Now, it get hidden in here. The information get cut off. So if you want to be able to see it, then format cells and then untick the merge cells so that you can see everything. Yeah, I'm going to repeat that for that. Press F4 to repeat so that you can read everything. So what it's saying is there are 13 unmatched transactions. What does that mean? It means that there are amount per invoice number in the cash GL, which is different from what's in the bank statement. For example, this invoice we are supposed to collect $200, but only $150 has been paid. So that is $50 difference. And then this invoice, $300 is the invoice amount, but we get paid more. That's strange. We may need to refund $50. And then this is even more peculiar because the invoice amount is $900, but somebody is paying us $4,450. We better check it out. Otherwise, our customer may not be happy and may call us in maybe a week time to ask us for a refund. Yeah. And then there is also transactions that does not exist in the bank statement at all, but exist in the cash GL, all of these things. And then there is one row over here where we have something in a bank statement, invoice number 100, but not in our GL. I wonder if somebody is typing it wrong. Maybe it's meant to be 10 instead of 100. Yeah. Okay, so that's what's unmatched. And then we have a sections of what's match. What does it mean? It says potentially match. And that's because the total by invoice number are exactly the same, $100 in the bank statement and in the cash GL. However, it is being marked as potentially match because for invoice number one in the bank statement, we have two transactions, once on the 1st of January and once on the 2nd of January, 50 and 50. Whereas in the cash GL account, we only have one row of invoice amount of $100. That's why the copilot is marking this transaction as potentially matched because we have more than one transactions in the bank statement. When it is exactly the same number of transaction, it is grouped under match transaction because we have one row in both the cash GL and the bank statement. Now, isn't this neat? This is then saying the grand total dollar amount in the cash GL is 25,000, in the bank statement is 23,000, and we have a difference. The cash GL is more than the bank statement, and it is so clear and most importantly can be done with one click once you got it set up. Now, in addition to that, there is also reconciliation summary on the right that you can read. Yeah. Wow. So this is automating the commentary that you may be able to send to your boss. All you need to do is click save as PDF or you can even include summary in the report. Let's try that. And voila, you've got all the comments at the bottom in here. How cool is this? Okay, what happened if we have to repeat the transaction? Because let's say in the bank statement, there is a mistake. We have to delete the last row and we want to refresh the analysis. What do we need to do? Can we click regenerate? Well, this is something to watch out. 
clicking regenerate does not completely regenerate the reconciliation report. When you want to repeat the analysis, you must go back and hit reconcile data and then hit next and then just check to make sure that the field is correct. For example, just now I need to remove invoice date and then hit next one more time. It's not taking too long. That's complete regeneration. And how do we know that? The best way is to check. That's 22850. And then let's just check that sum, 22850. And that's how we know that it's now completely refreshed. And then just like before, you can click kind of like include in the summary report. And that's done. Okay. And then mm, there is another button, troubleshoot a transaction. Oh, interesting. Let's try that. Oh my goodness. When you are troubleshooting, it provides the details. Ah, oh, how useful is this? All right then. So that one, for example, look at that. It just shows you how much is the amount and the additional information. That's really useful. Wow, wow, wow. How awesome is that? Do you think that you're ready to give this new feature a go? Please note that there is a limitation for Copilot for Finance for Excel because it can only be used to compare 10,000 rows of data. If you have more than that, what do you do? Any suggestions? If so, please share in the comments below. In the meantime, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss out in my future video. See you next time.